beautiful Sunday morning all. I wish to warmly welcome our viewers, both home and abroad, to worship with us at the Cluxton Bay Pastoral Region of the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago as we bring to you another online service. We pray God's blessing on each one and on our minister, Reverend Satnarayan Ramnath and his family. Let us dedicate the next few moments to praise and honor our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you. Good day, friends. I welcome you also to our online service this day. May God richly bless all of us as we now share this time together in His presence. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 98, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things. His right hand and holy arm have gotten Him victory. Let us continue our worship and prayer. Let us pray. O great and awesome Father, you have done marvelous things. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are also present with us right now. You, O God, created time for humans to mark the seasons and the days and the years. While you, O Lord, exist, outside time and from there you lovingly look over and shepherd those who love you and live their lives striving to bring honor and glory to your holy name father grant to us a fresh filling of the holy spirit to enhance our worship experience this hour and oh lord help us to open our hearts and draw closer to you this we pray in your name, O Lord Jesus. Amen. At this time, friends, we now invite the Bethel Presbyterian Church Choir to lead us with an anthem. Let us invite them.
us continue in prayer. Let us pray. Merciful and loving Father, we present ourselves before your throne of mercy and grace, seeking cleansing from known and unknown sins. O oh God, we acknowledge that these sinful acts have hurt others, including ourselves and most of all you, O oh Father. Father, cleanse us and give to us opportunities to make peace with those who we have offended. As Jesus Christ has made peace on the cross for believers with you. O Lord Jesus, we live hearts filled with gratitude and thankfulness for satisfying the wrath of God towards sinners who believe in you. We thank you, O Lord Jesus, for being the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world when you willingly surrendered your life on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. Help us, O Father, to never forget the love you have for the human race, that you gave your only begotten Son to die a gruesome death on the cross, so that we who believe in your Son are pardoned and receive the promise of eternal life. And thank you, O God, for raising Jesus from the grave and is now seated at your right hand, interceding on behalf of those you have given to him as his own. This prayer we offer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our resurrected Lord and Savior. Amen. God's word speaks to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 7. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. As we now prepare our gifts to present to our Lord Jesus Christ for the work of the church, that is, who are able to give and whatever you are able to give. If you are not able, that's all right. But let us now invite Kaylee Subransing to do an item for us as we prepare ourselves to present our offering. At the end of which we will then join together with the Bethel Presbyterian Church to in singing the doxology.
Let us now present our monetary gifts to Almighty God. Father, you have been good to us. Even during this time of COVID-19 pandemic, you have blessed your people with enough that we could continue living, O oh God, while many are under certain forms of duress, others are helping, O oh Father, and we thank you and bless you. As we now offer this monetary gift of God, we also present ourselves, those who are presented monetary gifts and those who are just presenting themselves for you, O oh Father. You are the one who have given us so many gifts and talents that we can use together with these monetary gifts for the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. Let's we pray in your name, O oh Lord Jesus. Amen. Friends, as we now put our gifts into our envelopes and which we will present at a later date or time in the church. At, at this time, we'll now invite our sister, Elder Denise Kisun John, to do today's reading from us, which is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 21, verses 15 to 19. Let us hear the word of God. The scripture lesson is taken from John, chapter 21, and I'm reading from verses 15 to 19. The passage is taken from the Good News Version. Let us prepare our hearts to listen to God's word. After they had eaten, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? Yes, Lord, he answered, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he answered, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. A third time, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter became sad because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And so he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Take care of my sheep. I am telling you the truth. When you were young, you used to get ready and go anywhere you wanted to. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you up and take you where you don't want to go. In saying this, Jesus was indicating the way in which Peter would die and bring glory to God. Then Jesus said to him, follow me. Here ends the reading. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading and understanding of his most holy and precious words. Amen. As we continue following the liturgical calendar of the church, we are now approaching the end of the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. And then we'll go on to his ascension on Ascension Sunday. After Jesus Christ rose from the dead, Jesus would have encountered many unique situations that required his divine abilities to resolve. Previously, we had seen the way Jesus had removed all doubts when Thomas had doubt about his resurrection. Thomas' doubts had led Thomas to demand certain physical proofs to authenticate what the other disciples had told him, that they had seen the risen Lord. The risen Lord then granted Thomas a special appearance to affirm that indeed he has risen from the dead. History recorded that Thomas went on to do many mighty works in the power of the Lord. Today we are going to explore the method that Jesus used to reinstate another one of his disciples, Peter. Peter whose confidence was rudely shattered when he denied knowing Jesus three times. 
The theme of our service this day is Jesus reinstates Peter. Let us come to God in prayer. O oh, Father, we pray at this time, O oh God, that you will help us to understand the hidden things underneath what has been written or revealed. To this end, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Now first, John 21 gives us a physical setting and a conversation that transpired between Jesus and Peter. From this account, we learn that Jesus and the disciples were sitting around a fire, eating the food that Jesus had prepared. We can well imagine how these people are huddled together around this fire, silently, and looking upon Jesus as he sits there with them. Now, verse 6, 15 recorded, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. There are many things we can extract from this one verse of scripture. Firstly, the timing of the dialogue. Jesus waited until they were comfortable and their stomachs were filled before he went into a sensitive issue or discussion with Peter. You see, friends, I right at the beginning, we can learn something from this. When we have to discuss something that is sensitive with someone, we should make sure the time when we will initiate such a conversation. Now, secondly, Simon, son of John, this is how Jesus addressed Peter. Simon, son of John, this address would have taken Peter back to one of the high points of being in the company of Jesus. When he answered, when Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? Peter responded, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. You see, friends, as that name, how he addressed him, these thoughts would have come flooding back to him. And he asked, do you love me more than these? The only thing that Jesus focused upon was Peter's love for him in regards to other things. Love was central in this delicate discussion. Let us note, my friends, that Jesus did not question and rebuke Peter for denying him three times in the courtyard of the high priest Caiaphas. He did not inquire about Peter repenting for his actions, his disloyalty, his untrustworthiness, and so on, but only upon Peter's love for him. <laughs> Friends, we all encounter challenging relations. Many times in our own families, this model Jesus showed us in resolving issues should be realized or utilized by all, especially when our main intention is to recognize each other's weaknesses and amicably resolve misunderstandings with the aim of strengthening those relationships. We are to follow Christ in how 
he bridged in. He was bridging the relationship between Peter and himself. And more especially, that Peter was thinking about. Fourthly, more than these, most probably, the word these would have been the men who were around the fire. The men who had gone on the fishing expedition with Peter. These men would have developed a strong, special bond with each other through traveling, sharing meals, sleeping under the same roof, and most recently, their fishing venture. Guilt would have entered the heart of Peter. Guilt because Peter had seen himself as having a superior love and loyalty for Jesus than others. Peter had shown this when he stated, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. Jesus, however, he knows the future. And Jesus indicated to Peter that before the rooster crows, Peter would disown him three times. Of course, that came to pass. Jesus would have known or seen that Peter in his heart was feeling guilty. Guilt was weighing heavily upon Peter's spirit and it had to be exposed and addressed. For guilt can, can be crippling and reduce a person's full potential if it is not dealt with. Only then would Peter be able to fulfill the divine work that God had in store for him. Friends, we must address guilty feelings that come upon us when we have done wrong. At those times, our consciences will activate guilt. And for our own good, we need to address the root cause of the problem and make peace with ourselves. Otherwise, our full potential can be stymied or impeded. Fifth, yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Here, Peter responded in the affirmative, yes, Lord. Also, it could have been the way how Peter conducted himself around Jesus that he expected Jesus to know that he loved him. Jesus said, feed my lambs. The word feed in its original language means to continue feeding. It is not a one-time act, but an, an ongoing responsibility. You see, friends, feeding the lambs means that Peter has to continuously be feeding the lamb, or in this case, the young converts. My indicates the owner of the lambs. The lambs belong to Jesus Christ. He is the owner. In fact, we are all belong to him, Christ Jesus. Lambs, these are baby sheep. They are the ones who have recently accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We must feed them with milk, for they are not ready to eat meat as yet. And here Jesus was telling him, you see the young people, or those who, even though they are aged, but they recently came and accepted him as a Lord and Savior, these people we have to treat tenderly, feeding them little by little as 
they will be able to digest what you are revealing to them. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus, Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Now Jesus asked the same question. And Peter responded with the same answer. However, Jesus changed his command. Take care of my sheep. Peter was now given the charge to look over the welfare of adult believers. Those who were matured in the faith. The meat eaters. You see friends, as we grow spiritually, then we are able to meditate and take in more and more of the solid food or the word of God that can come into our hearts and keep on growing. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Three times, Peter had denied Jesus in the public. And now Jesus asked Peter the third time if Peter loved him in the presence of the men sitting around the fire. Peter's guilt had to be dealt with in public in order for Peter to realize that even though what he did was wrong, he didn't have to conceal it anymore because his Lord and God had forgiven him. He cannot breathe in fresh air and bathe in the love, mercy, and grace of Almighty God. He said, look, you know all things. You know that I love you. Peter here acknowledges the omniscience of the risen Christ. Jesus knows everything, my friends. The past, the present, and the future. Every conceivable thing that we can imagine, or even things beyond our imagination, is like an open book before our Lord Christ Jesus. Also, Peter did not display the bravado he had previously shown and soon after being reduced to a frightened, trembling, and powerless individual. Peter now, Peter now knew and accepted the, the fact that as a human being, he had great limitations. Friends, immature Christians may believe they can do things on their own strength or merit and abilities. But mature Christians, based upon the experiences they would have had over the course of their lives, would know that they are nothing. And everything, they depend upon God the Father through Jesus Christ, the Son, to help them, to preserve them, to protect them, to take them from one trial to another trial, and every act, every walk, lifting them up stronger spiritually. After indicating the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God, then he, Jesus, said to him, Peter, follow me. It is well documented in the scriptures that Peter, after Jesus reinstated him, Peter followed Jesus and became a highly esteemed man of God. Many people were saved as Jesus walked through Peter by the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, if you will recall, over 3,000 people were saved when Peter boldly said that evangelical sermon to that diverse congregation or audience. 
You see, friends, when you have been touched by God, and when you know that all that you have done before has no merit anymore, that God has forgiven you, and now he's empowering you to spread the gospel, the good news, to follow him, that he can walk through you to bring others, people, to be saved. Thus fulfilling what Jesus had said when he came, that he came to seek and to save what was lost. That is our imperative now, my friend, those who are mature Christians. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we'll continue in prayer and we'll all join together at the end in praying the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, O God, for your protection, for your provisions, for your guidance during this most unsettling period created by the coronavirus. Heavenly Father, as we reflect upon your goodness to us, we also remember the pain and suffering many are experiencing. O oh God, we pray for those who are suffering from physical, psychological, and mental forms of illnesses, for those whose cupboards are empty, devoid of basic food necessities, and seeing their families starving because of being unemployed. Oh God, we pray for loved ones who are stranded abroad and cannot return to their homeland because of borders being closed. Lord Jesus, people need your help. Help us, O oh Lord, to turn to you when things appear abysmal and grant that we experience the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. As we pray in your name, O oh Lord Jesus, as we now all join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For there is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, we'll now invite the Bethel Presbyterian Church Choir to do another anthem for us.
come to the end of our service this day, let us thank God for His presence with us during this time of worship, following which we will join with the Bethel Presbyterian Church Choir in singing the choral benediction. Father, we thank you, God, for your inspiration, for your presence during this time of worship. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that even in this time of COVID-19, that you have given us the technology that we can still worship together online. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And now, let us all sing together with the Bethel Presbyterian Church Choir, the Choral Benediction. my sisters and brothers, go in peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with you and all God's people this day and forevermore. Amen.